Hi, I'm Leo. Hi, Leo. I'm a new dad. I uh, found myself window shopping this week for fanny pack. My car smells like McDonald's all the time. I'm turning into a real life tickle monster. I can't get these bad jokes out of my head. Like, why do melons have big weddings? Because they can't blow. Why do we know that? No, oh, it's OK. It's OK. We should be proud to be dads. Oh, uh, so why don't we say the, the paternity prayer? God, grant me serenity as I hide in the bathroom where my family can't find me. Courage to change every terrifying diaper and the wisdom to know when to belch and when not to. Amen. Yes. So let's get out there and be those fort building, tea party attending, cape wearing, homework helping, spider killing, dependable dads that those kids need. My yes! <laughs> Was not Andrew good this morning? Hope I brought a smile to your face. The title of my message this morning is A Father's Love. I'm taking it from Mark chapter 5, 21 to 43. I'm not going to read through all the scriptures, but I'll just give you a little synopsis of the story. We have a man called Jarius, who's a synagogue ruler, and his daughter is ill. So he knows that Jesus is healing and touching people's lives so he goes along to be able to see Jesus now he was a religious ruler and the religious rulers they didn't really get on with Jesus at all but his daughter was ill and because his daughter was ill do you know what that changes things you'll do anything to try to bring the help to your child that you possibly can and he goes along to hear and to see Jesus. But what happens is, as he's there, a woman pushes in and she has been bleeding for 12 years. The same length of time as Jarius held his little daughter in his arms. She was 12 years old and she was very ill. And Jesus was starting to go along with her. But then he stopped to minister to a lady who needed a touch from his life. You see, there are many people out there and we all have different needs. And my need may not be as important to you as your need, but there's still needs. And I want to thank God Almighty that he touched my life and he changed my life and he gave me hope. Maybe you have a need this morning. There's no matter better place to bring it and to bring it to the feet of Jesus. You see, it doesn't matter how powerful we are or how weak we are. In times of need, we all need help, don't we? We all need someone there to help us. This religious leader that we know, you were, he was called Jarius, but the lady was nameless. Why do we get his name? Because Peter was there. And Mark would have got his source from Peter. Peter was in the home. He knew Jarius and he would have spent time with him. He tells us that this religious leader, this synagogue ruler, he was in need. And it says this, seeing Jesus, verse 23, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him my little girl or my little daughter is dying please come and put your hands on her so she will be healed and live most people don't come to jesus until they're in desperation i didn't come to jesus until my life was a mess and there seemed to be like no return i went and i threw myself off a cliff i tried to kill myself i thought there was no return for my life. Two years, I said, there must be more to life to this. And then I heard that God loved me and could change my life. And the rest is history. 32 years, I've been walking with Jesus. You see, this die, 
He was a religious leader who probably didn't like Jesus too much. But now we see him at the feet of Jesus and he's pleading earnestly. You see, it doesn't matter about his belief system anymore. It doesn't matter about how he feels or what's going on. The most important thing is he wants to see his little girl touched. A father's love. He wants to see his daughter healed and restored. He's held his daughter in his arms. He's spent time with her for 12 years, but he wants to have many more years with her. There's nothing as lovely as a daughter and a daughter. And if, you have a da- if you're a daughter, I'm sure, and I hope that you've had good memories from your daddy. Unfortunately, there's some stinkers out there. There's some aren't even worthy to be called dads because of the way they've treated their children and other people. But here's a good dad, and I'm sure that you've had a good dad also. Here's a good dad, a dad that loves his daughter and would do anything to try to bring her help. He believes if Jesus touches her, she will be healed. He believes this. This is the fact that he goes and he travels to where Jesus is. The fact that he'll get down on his knees and he'll humble himself before Jesus, maybe not even liking him. The fact that he'll do this shows that he loves his daughter so much. Verse 24 says, So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and passed around. They reckon there could be up to 20,000 people when Jesus was ministering. Wow. As soon as they get started, there's a delay. A woman who's been bleeding for uh, 12 years, a woman who needs a touch from God, pushes in and she touches the tassels in his garment. Jesus knew that someone had touched him. And he says, who's touched me? And the disciple says, uh, Rabbi, everybody's pressing in. He says, no, somebody took something from me. Can I just say this? Jesus did not give this woman her healing. She took it. Why? Because she believed. She pushed in and she took what Jesus had to give her. Maybe you need to get something from Jesus today. He said that he will forgive you. Come on, take that forgiveness. You have to take hold of that. He's not going to push it upon you. You have to say, yes, I want your forgiveness. And you can receive that this morning. Can I say this? All delays are negative. Sometimes the delays add to the story. Sometimes the delays add to the significance of the story. I remember when my daughter Paula was born. They told us if she was to live that she could have brain damage. I cried out to God and I said, God, why? Why me, Lord? Why? Why us, Lord? We're Sunday school teachers. We do the best. We've been longing for a little child. And why us? But I put my trust in him. And with the help of others, they prayed and we prayed. And the pediatrician said to us, it's amazing the way this little baby's recovering. And I thought to myself, that's not amazing. That's my God. Paul is 29 now. And the only damage that she's brought us has been attitude damage. No, she's a good kid. And I love her. She hates it when I call her kid. She says, I'm 29 years old. She'll always be my kid. She'll always be my child. I would do anything for her. I love her with all my heart. And she knows that. And she wraps me around her little finger sometimes. But praise God. And now her daughter, Brooke, is doing the same. I love her also. And uh, so much... And she's like another little daughter, even though she's my granddaughter. And she's just a great child. But you know what? You would do anything for your daughters and your grandchildren, wouldn't you? And this dad, he was there. He wanted, he wanted to know the touch of God upon his child. Do you need a touch of God upon your life? This morning, verse 35 says, While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jarius, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher 
anymore. I wonder what was going through Jarius' his mind. Maybe the if only, if only the woman hadn't have come. If only Jesus had have, have went on with me. If only, if only, if only. And these if onlys can come against us so much and they can take our pace. Listen, never mind the if onlys. Can I just say this to you? The if onlys will keep you trapped. The if onlys will get you to a place where you keep on going over and over and over and in your mind and they'll bring you into a bad place. We need to stop and break the if onlys that try to come against us. We can all do things better, but the fact is the if onlys will only bring us into a place of pain. Jesus brings a response to the if only. He brings a response to fear. He brings a response to these if onlys that come against us. Would you like to hear his response this morning? This is the response of Jesus. Don't be afraid, he said. Just believe. He said to Jairus, listen mate, don't be afraid. You just keep on believing. You keep on trusting. And God is saying to you, don't be afraid this morning. Just keep on trusting. Just keep on believing. And I'll help you through whatever you're going through. I'll help you to be able to face whatever you're facing. I'll give you the strength that you need to be able to come through the other side. It's so important that we realize that the if onlys will stay. And guess what? Jesus knew that. If he had stopped believing in Jesus, if he had responded to the if onlys and says, oh, what's the point anymore? She's dead now. Guess what? He would not have seen his little daughter come to life. But Jesus was there and encouraged them and said, come on, keep on trusting. He did not let anyone follow. It says in verse 37, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, John, and the brother of James. He stopped the crowd from following. Jesus knew that he wanted to make sure that unbelief wouldn't stop, wouldn't stop the healing power, the faith that was needed to see this little girl raised up. You see, when Jesus was on the earth, he operated in faith, the same faith that you and I operate in. He operated in faith from the Father, from God. And we need to realize it's important while we're on this earth that we need faith. And we need to be able to believe and to trust in God. You see, why do the crowds stop following Jesus? Because Jesus said the word. He said, listen, please stop following. Is that the way he said it? No, he says, no more. Don't be coming. Just these people. And he went along to the house. Why was the woman who was healed? Why was she healed? Because Jesus said so. He said, unto your faith be it. He said to the woman, your faith has made you whole. Wow. Because she believed. You see, and guess what? It will be Jarius' faith that will see his little baby girl or his little girl. She'll always be his baby. His little girl at 12 years old raised up. It will be his faith trusting in God. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him first 40. Have you ever had someone laugh at you? because of your faith, because of your trusting? Have you ever had someone mock you and say you think, oh, he's mad? When we were over here, when we came over here at first, 19 years ago, on the September in Barrow, we decided we were going to have an open hour. And as we were having that open hour, it started to rain. And someone was on the phone to me and they says, Fred, what are you going to do? It's raining. I says, well, surely if God showed us to have the open hour, he will show us, uh, he will be able to stop the rain. See, I'd had this happen before in Belfast and I knew that God could do it and God would do it if we believed. And then the worship leader came on and the elder and he started and we're having a bit of confrontation. I says, listen, if God showed us to have it, 
it will stop rain. And he says, but what about the equipment? I said, well, surely God can stop the rain 10 minutes before the equipment. It was the same thing that was coming against me that came against in Belfast. I had to rise up with faith and belief. My daughter Paula is sitting listening to me. And it's raining outside. We have a mile to walk to the church. Next thing she puts her sunglasses on. And I says to her, what are you doing, love? She says, well, if you're believing for the rain to stop that ink, I'm believing for the sun to come out. I wanted to say to her, no, it's okay. And I thought, wow, you just get on with it, guy. And we walked down and she walked down with her sunglasses on in the rain. There wasn't a bit of sun about. And I'm sure if people had seen us, they would have laughed at us. But we didn't care. We got down 10 minutes before the rain stopped. And that day when we came to Milam to do the second part of the open hour, the sun came out and Janet quit and put her sunglasses on. Can I just say this to you, church? Come on. Why did it stop raining? Because we believed and we trusted in God. It doesn't matter if people laugh at you. It doesn't matter what they think. The most important thing is that we keep on trusting God. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. Verse 41, he took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Why does he put them all out of the house? Because he wants nothing to stop the faith moving. He wants nothing to stop or to hinder what's going to happen next. And he doesn't care what they think. He says, get out of the house. Get out of the room. Nothing is going to hinder this faith because this little girl is going to raise up. You see, now there's no delay. There's an immediately. Immediately. When he spoke, the little girl stood up and began to walk around the room. There was an immediately, when Jesus spoke to that little girl, he said, get up. There was no hesitation. She didn't say, I'm not getting up. She got up and she responded to the voice of God. And she got up and she walked about that house. The joy filled that house. There's nothing as more joyful when you see God touching your child. When God touched uh, Paula, Wow, the joy that filled our hearts and filled our lives. I like this bit. He says, give her something to eat. I like the eat, as you know. Give her something to eat. He had dealt with the spiritual, now he was dealing with the physical. Can I just say this? God is concerned about your physical as much as he's concerned about your spiritual. Because they're a package. Guess what, people? you to be strong and he wants you to be healthy and he wants you to know him and to know his love and power so what does God want to say to us through this message this morning what does he want to say through this father's love the greatest father of all is God almighty and his love is unconditional there's nothing like his love and maybe you don't know his love he would love you to get to know it this morning he would love you to get to know him to get to know who he is but what does God want to say to us through this message and I'm going to finish Jesus hears your heart's cry there's two things that moves the heart of God for me there's faith and there's the heart's cry and if you're crying out to God God hears that heart's cry and God will respond to that heart's cry for you this morning if you let him what do we see through this message? Stop living in the if onlys. Don't live in the if onlys. Live in faith. Live trusting God. Don't allow fear to stop you receiving what God has for you. Because fear's a robber. It will steal. It will take your faith. It will bring doubt. And it will do whatever it can. Don't allow fear to stop you receiving what God has for you. The fourth thing I want us to get out of this message this morning. Keep believing until you don't need to believe anymore until you're with Jesus. Amen. You see, can I just say this? Bill Waters doesn't need to believe anymore because he's with Jesus. John Barry doesn't need to believe anymore because he's with Jesus. Can these fathers are with Jesus? They're in the glory of God. They don't need to believe anymore, but we need to believe, don't we? My daddy doesn't need to believe anymore because he's with Jesus. We need to believe.
and keep on believing and be the best fathers that we can possibly be. And can I say this to you? Taking hold of the Word of God will help you to be the best father, the best grandfather, the best that you can possibly be, the best friend. Surround yourself, the fifth and final one, with like-minded people, with all their daddies who love God, with all their people who love God. Don't allow people to come and to take away what God has given you. We need to stay around. Why did Jesus get rid of the people? Because they weren't like-minded. They weren't believing. He said, get out of the house. Why did he stop the crowd coming? Because he wanted the inner ones who were believing. He said, listen, you stay there. Don't you just be coming along. Get around like-minded people, people who are believing. And maybe you're not a believer this morning. God wants you to come to know him. I'm going to say a prayer now. And if you'd like to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, if you'd like to have a heavenly Father, then today, say this prayer and mean it from your heart. And then PM you and let me know you've said it so we can help you. But repeat this after me. Father in heaven, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I need your love this morning. I need your comfort. Strengthen me right now. I repent, I turn away from my past, I turn away from the if onlys, and this day, Lord, I put my heart in yours, in the name of Jesus. If you've said that prayer, you've meant that prayer, God has come in to your life, he's our, I want to encourage you, keep on trusting in him, but then I'm just going to say a prayer for everyone, Father in heaven, all that have heard. We pray, God, for everyone that is listening, that you'll touch them, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll comfort them, and that you'll be with them in the name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, the Bible says that you're a new creation, the old is gone, and the new has come. Come on, let's sing that song this morning. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Are you ready, worship team? Come on, let's get this song going. was good, the communion was good, I think the word was good also. Uh, we hope that you got something out of the message and out of the worship and communion today. But please do remember that on Tuesday at 10.50 we will be going up to Bankhead just before you come to the prison and we'll be standing across that field and we'll be clapping and showing our appreciation for the life of uh, Bill Waters and we will be doing that uh, at 10.50 
and uh, I hope as many can get there as possible. But please do remember we're still social distancing and there will be some masks there for people who, who want one and some hand sanitizer. But keep your distance and let's give God the glory as we clap this mighty man of God because that's what Bill Waters was. I loved him so much and uh, he's just a great friend and you know he'll be a law a, a, a great miss to the fellowship and to the community and to his family but he'll always be in our hearts so let's just say a word of prayer father in heaven we thank you lord for everyone today who tuned online we pray that you'll bring comfort to those lord who need comfort this morning those who need help lord that you'll strengthen them lord just be with them now lord and we thank you, Lord, that you are such a, a fantastic, awesome God, that you care for us and you're there for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Happy Father's Day. See you all on Wednesday. We're not having a service on Wednesday as we're going to be streaming uh, the funeral service of uh, Bill Waters. But we're going to be doing that only on Millam Community Church. Uh, page so please do tune in to that if you know Bill and uh, join with us as we celebrate his life God bless you two top fives on me first nine second goes downhill it's way to the left behind the trees eight goes very much up up going up long down the right hand side and he gets some help from the slope and we'll have that for an eagle. Good shot.